Hi, I'm Martin Newmark at HouseKnowHow.com. In this video, I want to explain uh, what the inner workings are of a condensate pump. We've uh, I've got a couple other videos out there that talk about what a condensate pump is and the most common installation error. But uh, what actually goes on inside a condensate pump uh, that allows it to do what it does. Before I get started, if you would, please take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. And if you want, click the notification bell so that you get alerted to new videos when I post them. Thanks. I appreciate that very much. This is our classic condensate pump. This one, if you've watched the other video, know that it's not installed properly because the overflow switch is not wired into the furnace or air conditioner. But what actually goes on inside the condensate pump to make it work? Let's take a look at this schematic of a condensate pump. In this picture, you see two switches, the pump switch and an overflow switch. The pump switch, when the water is low, the pump switch is normally open. Whereas the overflow switch, which is wired into the furnace or air conditioner, is normally closed. You can see these are connected right here. Okay, And then this one is open. There's no connection. As water drips into the condensate pump and this water line goes up it's going to cause this float switch to go up as well. As that float switch goes up this pivot arm is going to pivot and eventually make contact right here. Okay. Once that makes contact, the pump will turn on and it's going to pump water out and this water level is going to go down. Okay. As soon as that water level goes down, this float's going to go down and this contact is going to open up again. And it's essentially going to be like this again. Okay. And this is the cycle that this pump is going to take for the life of the pump. As soon as that pump dies, the water is going to continue to rise. As the water continues to rise, it's eventually going to hit the overflow switch lever. When it gets high enough, it's going to pivot this lever arm to a point where there's no contact over here. When this disconnects, the overflow switch opens and power to the thermostat is going to be disconnected. Okay. When that's disconnected, the furnace or air conditioner can no longer listen to the thermostat, if you will and the furnace or air conditioner will not run. And so you'll have to call for help or troubleshoot and fix it yourself. If this overflow switch is not wired in, this switch will still disconnect, but it's not going to shut down your furnace or air conditioner. And it will continue to run and eventually water is going to overflow and spill onto the floor uh, wherever this uh, condensate pump is sitting. And that's the problem we want to avoid. We want the overflow switch to stop the furnace when the pump fails. So this is the inner workings of the condensate pump and what these two different float switches are doing and, and essentially what's going on and why this thing works the way it does. You might note that I have water up above this switch, and th this is a schematic only. There's, there isn't a switch that actually gets buried in water. That, that switch is probably 
up here somewhere and the lever arm uh, gets tripped up in there, um, not underwater. So that's it. That's how a condensate pump works. Please uh, take a moment to uh, subscribe to my video channel and click the little bell so that you get notifications when I send out new videos. Thanks for watching. I'm Martin Newmark at HouseKnowHow.com.